Hi everyone, this is John chapter 9. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who'd been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It wasn't because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming, and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, <clears throat> made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Salawam. Salawam means sent. So the man went and washed and came back, seeing his neighbours and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was, and others said, no, he just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, yes, I am the same one. They asked, who healed you? What happened? And he told them, the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. So I went and washed, and now I can see. Where is he now, they asked. I don't know, he replied. Then they took the man who'd been blind to the Pharisees, because it was on the Sabbath that Jesus had made the mud and healed him. The Pharisees asked the man all about it, so he told them. He put the mud over my eyes, and when I washed it away, I could see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man, Jesus, is not from God. He's working on the Sabbath. Others said, but how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division of opinion among them. Then the Pharisees again questioned the man who'd been blind and demanded, what's your opinion about this man who healed you? The man replied, I think he must be a prophet. The Jewish leaders still refused to believe the man had been blind and could now see. So they called in his parents. They asked them, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he now see? His parents replied, we know this is our son and that he was born blind, but we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him. He's old enough to speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who'd announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why they said he's old enough. Ask him. So, for the second time, they called in the man who'd been blind and told him, God should get the glory for this because we know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. I don't know whether he's a sinner, the man replied, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. But what did he do, they asked. How did he heal you? Look, the man exclaimed, I told you once, didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they cursed him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. Well, that's very strange, the man replied. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he's ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one's been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. You were born a total sinner, they answered. Are you trying to teach us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You've seen him, Jesus said, and he's speaking to you. Yes, Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshipped Jesus. Then Jesus told him, I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Some Pharisees who were standing nearby heard him and asked, are you saying we're blind? If you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, Jesus replied, but you remain guilty because you claim you can see. So I'm going to keep this really simple and focus on that one phrase, I was blind, but now I see. This wasn't a metaphorical image. This was a real story of a real healing from blindness. 
But John does make it quite clear that there's a wider spiritual lesson in the story. He uses language of light and dark, day and night, throughout the chapter. And the last few verses very specifically take this and use it as a wider spiritual lesson. As you go through the chapter, you see all sorts of nonsense thrown at this man. And all he could really respond was, All I know is that I was blind, but now I can see. I used to work quite closely with a blind colleague and we'd, we'd often talk about what that meant to him. He was really independent uh, and, and we used to chat and he'd talk me through some of the things he had to do different to me to negotiate his way through life. He'd walk pretty much anywhere with his white cane but he needed help on and off the train. He used special software at work to read emails and documents to him, dictating them back and so on. He'd use a talking app on his phone to get the time. All these little things. He had a clear dress sense that was uniquely his and explained how he worked that through with his wife. He once came with his little kids to work um, and it quickly became apparent that he needed a bit of help looking looking after them in the, in the sense of making sure they were behaving because they were all over the place. And we all had to help him. I came to kind of really understand how he perceived the everyday so differently to me. He used different senses. He had to find totally different behaviours and dependencies to navigate the same spaces I lived in and could navigate with my eyes. And that was the story of this blind beggar today, except it all changed. Jesus goes on to say that that needs to be all our stories, whether we're physically blind or not. He talks about the blind seeing and those who can see becoming blind. So he's dividing the whole world into those who see and let the light change them and those who choose to remain in darkness. We're those who can and should see everything around us, aren't we, totally differently from those who are spiritually blind, those who choose not to see the light of Jesus. And that should mean that we navigate our everyday lives totally differently, like me and my friend did. Sometimes we might have a mic drop moment where we realise that we were just seeing everything in the wrong light and we adjust immediately, maybe quite radically. Other times, there might be smaller, more gradual adjustments we make. And here, here I often wonder whether the healing might have taken a little time for the guy to adjust to sight. Did things come in focus maybe gradually? I can kind of imagine him wincing from the light and amazed at what colour is and so on. So sometimes there might be a gradual understanding brought to us that we've been living as if we were in the shadows. But actually the light is just over there and we need to move into it. I was blind and now I see. Are you struggling to see clearly? Are you maybe seeing things out of focus and need the sharp focus of Jesus to see clearly and act appropriately? Is the light dazzling you? And you might even be scared to enter it. Or are you deliberately hiding in the shadows where you can live the lie that no one can see you? Or is it all of the above? Well, Jesus simply says, you can see. The blind man simply said, all I know is that I was blind and now I see. Father God, may my story, my testimony today, tomorrow and for all my days be that I was blind but now I see. Enlarge my vision, Lord. Bring me into the clear light of Jesus so I can be a light to others. Amen.